Hashem. Shalom Aleichem. Thank you so much, everyone. Guys, we're always about to start. Live? Live. Shh. There is an amazing, amazing story about Rabbi Nachman of Westlev in the early days in his childhood. Rabbi Nachman is telling his life story and telling us about many difficulties that he had in his life, many hard times, many downs, and in he went through what that we're going through when we were 30 and, and on, so he went through those things when he was six years old. He, he already went through his <coughs> downs and, and, and found himself confused and, and looking for the way in the, the ways of tshuva and how to come back to Hashem when he was six already. So that's on Ben Kadosh. In his book he's telling that in one of the times that he f fell from faith and he found himself so not stable and he was disappointed from Hashem and he felt so lost and, and then after a few days he came back to himself and he said, no, I, how could I think negative thoughts about Hashem and Hashem is so great and he said, no, I must and I must come back to Hashem and and then he said, and in that day I decided to get stronger from that day and on, that no matter what will happen to me, I will always gonna come back to Hashem. That's what he said. He didn't say, I decided that from that day and on I'm not gonna fall anymore. That's not something that you can say. It's not in our power to decide not to fall. We don't have that ability. What that he decided was to come back to Hashem every time that he will fall, because he will fall. We all gonna fall. There is no guarantee for no person in the world not to fall, not to fail, not to fall into sadness, to despair, to lose his mind, to forget things, to fail in halachot. There is no way in the world that we can save ourselves from those kind of failures. The only solution that we can find is always to want to come back to Hashem again, to restart our Abodat Hashem like we haven't started before, to do as much as we can again. And Rabbi Nachman is saying that a person that really wants to become kosher he must go through thousands of up and downs in his life before he will achieve that goal, to be, to, to be kosher, to be holy, to be pure, to be righteous. You have to go through thousands of up and downs in your life and that's the plan. So if you went through only hundreds, so there is a long, long way in front of you. <laughs> Don't be scared, that's the will of Hashem. That's what we need to go through because when we are failing, because when we are falling, so then we're learning lessons that we can never learn without those downs, without those failures. Because those downs, those failures are humbling us and giving to us the wisdom, the wisdom to know Hashem. Because you can know Hashem only when you're humble. You can know Hashem only when you're surrendering yourself to Him. And as long as the arrogance and the pride is, is playing a part in your a role, in your life, so you cannot know Hashem completely. Only when a person decides, okay, I understand that I cannot achieve things on my own. I understand that I cannot do it because I'm wise, because I'm strong, because I'm rich, because I'm gifted, because I'm talented, because I have good friends, because my parents will help me. Only then, when you give up on all of those fake um, securities, dreams, imaginary hopes, only when you give up on all of those you can achieve completion in counting on Hashem and trust only on Hashem, to trust only on Him. The person that will trust Hashem completely in 100% he will be the one that will be answered in 100% of the times. 
The reason that Hashem is not counting, is not answering your prayers in a certain time, is because that your trust was not 100% on Him. But Aboteach Bashem Chesed Yisobevenu. When you trust on Hashem, only kindness will surround you. The situation is so deep, and a person needs to come so deep into his soul and to recognize himself that it can be a very big mission. Sometimes a person can think to himself, okay, I'm serving, okay, I'm doing. Many people, it's easy to complain, to say, but I give my miser money, so why, why I don't have enough? But I'm doing good, why I'm suffering? I have friends that are calling me and complaining and, and whining and crying on their sorrow, and they feel like, what? I'm doing everything right, I'm doing everything bad, the best, I'm generous, I'm giving, I'm helping, and why am I suffering? And I want to tell them, because just only one small thing is missing. You're not humble. You're just not humble yet. You're just not, you're doing, you're amazing, you're waking up, you're praying, you're giving, you're supporting, you're, Great, you're doing fantastic things, but still, you think that you are part of your salvation. <laughs> you don't understand that Hashem needs to come and to save your life. And then, when you understand that, so then all the doors are open. But before of that, you still suffer. You suffer because of your own selfish, because of your own distance from Hashem. There was a situation once that a friend of mine told me a story that he went through. He had to pay a big debt to his landlord, something like two or three months that he, that he owed him, and he didn't have the money. And he's a best of a chassid, and he said, okay, you know what, I'll go, I'll do a long in Bodedut, I'm going to talk to Hashem, Hashem will answer my prayers. And that he, he did, he went to the forest and he started talking to Hashem and prayed and prayed and prayed, please Hashem, answer my request, I need this money, please make a miracle, you have the power, I need the tshuva, everything, everything, everything. In the end of his prayer, suddenly, he realized that, like, he heard his thoughts talking from his mind, and he heard himself saying, okay, and if Hashem not going to answer my prayer, so I'm going to call my father-in-law. <laughs> and it's a very honest thought. That was his thought. And when, when it hit him that he's really like just acting, playing, not really counting on Hashem, just, okay, yes, I'm praying, I'm chassid, I'm, but uh, if I'm going to be stuck, I know what to do. But you cannot be answered like that. When you're not 100% with Hashem, Hashem cannot be 100% with you. Really to be with Hashem, it's 100%. That's what you need. That's what we need. And our souls are desiring for that thing from inside. We really want that, but we're too afraid to do that. We're afraid to cross that bridge. And Rabbi Nachman said, it's a narrow bridge. It's a very, very narrow bridge. It's hard to walk on that bridge. But the main thing that you need to do is not to be scared. Not to be scared to do what? To make another step. To progress. Never to stop. Never to give up. No matter how much you're afraid, if you will listen to the voice of your own fears and gonna try to listen, okay, now I'm afraid. Afraid of what? What can happen to you? If you're gonna confront your fears and gonna deal with them, you're gonna see that you're afraid only from the fear itself. You're afraid of your emotions and you're not afraid from the situation itself. What can happen to you? You're going to be kicked out of the house? Okay, so you're going to find another house. You're going to go back to your parents' house? Okay, so you're going to be stuck over there for two weeks. Nothing can happen that is so terrifying like the fear of sitting alone and thinking and worrying so much and losing your mind and being nervous and screaming and, and, and being aggressive on everyone and attacking it. And why? Because you're afraid. From what are you afraid? You're afraid to deal with your own emotions, with your fears, with your memories from the past. From that you're afraid. If you're going to check yourself and going to start working on your awareness to listen to your inner voice, what's going on with me? From what I'm so scared of? 
People scared of rebuke, afraid to be insulted, afraid to be... So what? So she's going to tell you what she thinks about you. So he's going to tell you what he thinks. So what's going to happen? Like it never happened before. But you attack so much and you ignore and you fight and you rebuke and you mock and you laugh and you disgrace and you, 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 you shaming other people and fighting and arguing. And because of what? That you're afraid to be hurt. But if you're going to be hurt, it won't hurt you so much. Like that feel that is causing so much sorrow and damage in your life. To deal with the fears, it's to find Hashem. To find Hashem, it's to count on Hashem. To count on Hashem, it's to understand that there is no one in the world that can really hurt you. If you're going to be rebuked, if now you're going to be insulted, so what? The Torah is telling us, the you should love the rebuke. You should listen to the one that rebukes you. You should follow the advice that Hashem is supplying to you through that channel, through that person. That now he is insulting you, he is breaking your spirit. What is he telling you? He's just helping you to recognize things about yourself, things that you wouldn't listen to them if they would come in a lower voice in a voice that wouldn't rebuke you as hard. Sometimes Hashem is humiliating us and breaking our spirits only because that the message is, so, message is so important. And we must get that point already. We must get, must get that lesson already. And we're ignoring it for years. We don't want to hear it. We want to fight with it. We don't want to listen. Why you don't want to listen? It's an opportunity for us to grow, to develop, to listen to that wisdom that now came through that mouth from that person, that he's got so much to give you. One time my wife, she screamed at me, and she told me, I hate you. That's what she said. She said, I hate you. And I know she loves me. I know. We're so close. For years, we're so close. It cannot be. And I asked her, how can you say that you hate me? So she said, because I love you so much, and you're disappointing me. Her way to tell me I love you and you're disappointing me was to say I hate you because she couldn't express herself. A person can be so hurt and a person can tell you something that the meaning is completely different. It's the opposite. She can tell you I hate you and she means to say I love you. I need your help. Don't disappoint me. I need your hand. I need your support. I need your love. And she's using those words I hate you. Only because that's the way that she can express herself right now. Out of her pain. Out of her sorrow. So, if I would be arrogant in that point, so proud, full of myself, can what? How can you say something like that? And then you have a, a World War III. Uh, based on what? On uh, nothing. Actually, she just told you, I love you. But you can't hear it. Because you're so full of yourself. And then you fight with the one that you love. With the one that loves you. And then you argue, and you fight, and then you insult her, and she insults you, and you lost the conversation, you lost the point. The point there was, I love you, I need your help. Only, the success depends only in how much we are preparing ourselves to life. Let's say now that you went through some difficulty in life. You can get so frustrated, and so sad, and so depressed, oh... I just been been fired. I was working for years in that company. I lost my business. I had to close my store. I I tried to make aliyah. I was work, I I was over there for three years in Israel, and I had to go back to. Okay, now let's make a small investigation. Why are you gonna fall right now to such sadness because of your failure? Why? Let's say Hashem wants you back in the U.S. Let's say Hashem wants you now to. Find another job. What's your problem? Your problem is that you wanted to succeed with that aliyah. That you wanted to succeed with that business. That you didn't want to have more challenges in life. The reason that you're suffering is only because your will is refusing to surrender to the supervision of Hashem, to the will of Hashem. If someone would tell you that you need now to leave Israel and to go and collect $3 million in the U.S., you would run. You would swim the ocean. 
Why? Because you know, three millions are waiting. You would do the same thing, going on the same flight, in the same date, in the same hour, but happy. Why? Because you have a purpose to go to the U.S. Because you had the will to go to the U.S. But if now you feel that all of your dreams fell, and you failed, and now you're going to be a disgrace, and what people will say, and what your parents will say, and now for you, for you, whatever, it is against your own will, so then you suffer. You're not suffering from the effort, from the hours of labors, from life itself. You suffer because your will is refusing to, the, to surrender to the will of Hashem. You can do exactly the same work, the same effort to put in life and to be happy if you have a purpose. So I think, and that's what I feel, and that's how I'm working with myself, that sometimes it doesn't have to be so radical from one side to the other. Sometimes only small adjustment, small tuning is required to understand. You need to ask yourself, what am I doing here in life? What's really my mission in life? Am I here to be rich? Am I here to make aliyah? Am I here to be honored? Am I here to succeed? What is the mission of my life? When you come to the understanding that you're really here to serve Hashem, to listen to the voice of Hashem, so then you can find the power, the patience, the faith to go through every challenge. And on that, Rabbi Nachman is talking in Torah Kuf Nun Hei, 155. That Rabbeinu is explaining over there what it means to have a complete faith. And Rabbeinu is saying that a person can breathe and accept every difficulty and every confusion while serving Hashem. That you want to pray every day in shul, that you want to do one hour every day, that you want to keep Shabbat, that you want to eat kasher, you want to drink only chalav Israel, whatever, perfect, to be perfect in Avodat Hashem. Great, but sometimes Hashem wants you to do something else. Sometimes Hashem wants you to deal with challenges. Sometimes Hashem wants you to deal with fear. Sometimes Hashem wants you to deal with stress. Sometimes Hashem wants you to confront yourself and recognize the defaults that you still have and to fix them. And if everything you will go smooth in your life, you will never going to see them. We don't have that point of truth inside of ourselves that will be strong enough to judge ourselves completely in our Yot, to know everything about ourselves, to do complete shuva, to, to, uh, to ask for forgiveness and to move on and to fix ourselves. We're ignoring many, many defaults, the defects that we have, and keep on faking and acting like everything is great. So Hashem, He must rebuke us. He must put the mirror in front of our face that we're going to see. Because He even made us in a way that we cannot recognize all of our defects. If you have something now between your teeth, can you recognize it without a good friend or a mirror? You cannot. You ate something. So you have something green between your teeth. Nothing in the world will wake you up to, to see it, unless you have a good friend or a mirror. There are things, there are defaults, defects that we have in ourselves that we cannot fix until Hashem will put someone in front of us and will tell you, you're wrong. Something is wrong with you. You have something green in your teeth. Not you. Someone else. Not you. Somewhere else. And we need that. Because you want to have that friend that will tell you. Because between you and your friend, it's okay. You can clean it and then you're great. So that rebuke. Okay, so she told you you're selfish. What's the problem? Well, you, you want to stay selfish? That's a problem. You don't want to be rebuked because you want to stay selfish. That's your problem. If really you would want not to be selfish anymore, you would say, Really? Was I selfish? Please tell me. What did I do? Really, I desire to learn. I want to fix myself. And then you love the rebuke. And then you can understand the complete Torah. Because you cannot understand all of the Torah before you are ready to learn from the one that rebukes you. Because the verse is saying, Et asher Hashem Hashem rebukes the one that he loves. 
He loves you. This is why He is rebuking you because He wants you to fix yourself completely. That you will achieve completion serving Him while serving Him. He wants you to understand. He wants you to learn. All of the women are now so happy. Wow. I'm the angel of Hashem. I'm the messenger. I'm going to fix Him. <clears throat> They're right. <laughs> right. I can't argue. They're right. They're the angels of Hashem being sent to help us. The Ariya Kadosh said that already 500 years ago, women, Havai Menu, she completed her tikkun. She fixed herself completely. And I heard once from a righteous man that he said that the reason that women are still suffering, so okay, let's say that men need to suffer and women came to help them, great, wonderful, but why women need to suffer? Because there was one thing that's a mission. That's something very important. Something else that I wanted to share with you is that many people are trying to accomplish big things in Avodat Hashem and losing things that are much more important along the way. For an example, you heard the lecture, you went to a class, you heard something, a rabbi, a friend of yours told you, that there are amazing things that you can do with your time. Let's say you can learn, let's say you can wake up chatzot, you can, can do a chatzah, amazing things. You should go to the mikveh, you should go to Uman, Rosh Hashanah, big things in Avodat Hashem. Great, it's true. All of those things are amazing and fantastic. But don't forget how important it is to say Shakol Niyabit and don't forget how amazing it is just to believe in Hashem. On Mitzvah Ta'emunah, just on to believe in Hashem in Barach, it's written that Abraham Avinu believed in Hashem, Vayamen Hashem, lo litzdaka. And Hashem count that Mitzvah, just faith in Hashem, as charity. And on charity it's written, V'tzdakat atzil mimavet. So every moment that you just believe in Hashem, you don't even have the power to keep the Torah Mitzvot, but you believe the Torah Mitzvot is right. You just believe that you should keep Shabbat, but when Shabbat is coming, you're failing. But you believe, you still believe that you should keep Shabbat, that Shabbat is holy. Just on that Mitzvah of faith, you will be rewarded, and you're already being rewarded, exactly like charity. That you, by keeping, by thinking about that, just believing in Hashem in Barach, you are saving lives of people. Because we think that we're individuals, but only the bodies that are surrounding us are actually dividing us as human beings from the rest of the souls. But actually, when we, after 120 years, are going to remove those glasses of the physical world, we're going to realize that really, we were not separated at all. The reality is that we are all one soul. We are all one together here. Just we cannot see it. That's the issue. We cannot see how close we are to each other, how attached we are to each other. And because of the physical separation, that it's only a visual illusion, it's only a mistake. Your eye experiences something that is not the full picture. You cannot see how much effect you have on other people, even just with your thoughts, even just with your faith, with your will. When you want something, you're changing the world with your desire. When you hope to achieve something, you're bringing down huge amounts of bounty that influence and purify other, many, many other souls that are around you, that are close to you. And with prayers, it's even greater. Because prayers can change the nature, can change the, 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 the reality. And when you pray, not always you can see the result, but always there is a positive effect. And people are afraid to do that. People are afraid to cross that border and to become spiritual. Really, when you want to connect yourself to Hashem, you need to have courage. You need to be ready to sacrifice yourself and to throw yourself into the depths of the sea and to sacrifice yourself and to deal with your fears and with your emotions that you haven't dealt with them until now and to go with your heart and with your passion and with your desire to serve the one that you believe in. 
You cannot serve the one that I believe in. If I reach the truth and you reach the truth, so we're going to believe in the same one. I don't need to bring you to my truth and you don't need to bring me to your truth. If you believe that there is one truth, you should count on me and you should help me to be a man of truth and then I will reach your truth as well. We're going to have the same truth because there is only one truth. To convince another person to believe it's wrong. You can just help him to become a person of truth. Tell him, seek for your own truth and he will find it. When you pray for someone else, immediately you're changing his luck. You're opening huge channels of, channels of bounty to come and to help him and to build him. And sometimes you cannot see it. And sometimes he cannot see it as well because he still needs to go through certain things in life that must humble him that he will have the vessel to receive the bounty, to receive the spiritual bounty that is ready and coming to him. The vessels will be always physical, always, like every vessel. It must be harder and, and more tight and strong and, and pressed than the liquid or the, the spiritual bounty that will come and it will contain. So, when you want to expand your vessels, you need to move your physicality to the side. This is why we're going through situations in life that we need to be rejected, that we need to be humbled to create a shape of a vessel to contain spirituality. But for that, we need to have that pure intention, the right preparation to build, to expand those vessels, to contain the will of Hashem. So we must not argue with the supervision of Hashem. We must let Him lead us. We must let Him take us to where He wants us to go. So if you've been fired, or if someone told you that you need to go and do something, you need to listen. Because on Yaakov Avinu it's written that if he would refuse to go to Egypt, Hashem would put him in chains and would drag him to Egypt, because he had to go to Egypt. And if you need to go to Egypt, you're going to go to Egypt. No matter how you're going to think, no matter what you're going to plan, how much you're going to refuse, you're going to argue, if you're not going to go with your will, they're going to drag you in chains to that place. Why? Because it's important. Because your soul is over there. Because there are people that are waiting you for you over there. You have sparks over there. You have a mission. There is a purpose. And it's much more important than the, you, what did you see with your physical limited eyes. But Hashem he sees it. And that's why He's sending those messengers to you. And He's talking to you, and He's opening your eyes, and He's offering things to you, and He's telling you, and He's so sending message, messages, and, and, and hints, and signs. And only a person that is working on His inside, on His awareness, to listen, to accept Hashem, to feel Hashem. And the way to do it is to want to understand. It's to have that will, that desire. Everything depends on the will. If, let's say, I want now to hold something in my hand. Now, I'll take a pen for an example. I want to hold it. What is holding this pen now in the air? Only my will. In the moment that I will not gonna want to hold it anymore, it will go down. But if I want it up, it will be up. It depends only on my will. Everything that you want to achieve in life works like that. Everything depends on your will. But in the physical world, things take time. When you want to achieve something in the physical world, it will take time. You want to cook something, you need to buy the, 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 the materials, you need to take it home, you need to wash the dishes, you need to cut the, the, the ingredients, you need to put it, and then to wait or to, to four hours until the dough will, 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 will rise long enough that it will be ready like you like it, and then you need to put it to the stove. Great, it takes time. To the oven, it takes time, right? In the physical world. But in the spiritual world, it doesn't work like that. In the physical world, everything takes time. But in the spiritual world, there is no process. The world to come, the world that is above, the world of truth, is not under the limitation of time. Let's say I want to be with Hashem. What should I do for that? 
Should I learn four pages of Gemara for that? If I want to be with Hashem, so I am now with Hashem. Where is Hashem? Here and now. So I'm with Hashem. So I don't need to do anything to be with Hashem. Hashem is here. What I need to do, I need to connect myself in my thoughts to Hashem. When you connect yourself to Hashem, you're with Hashem. If I want now to learn four pages of Gemara, great, it's going to take me an hour, two hours, until I'm going to learn four pages of Gemara. But if I want to be with Hashem, I don't need to do anything for that. If you really want to live your life with Hashem, you're not obligated to things in the physical world. If you want or you feel that you need to keep Torah mitzvot, that's great. But the fact that you will fail in something or you're going to do much more than other people, it doesn't mean that you'll, it will bring you closer to Hashem. To be close to Hashem, it depends only in your will, in your intention. If you're humble and you love Hashem and you want to be with Hashem, so you remember Hashem and Hashem is with you and you're with Hashem. But if you're arrogant and selfish and you want to be and you want to have success and you want to have control and you want to have the power, so you're not thinking about Hashem, so you don't feel Hashem, so Hashem, so to speak, is not part of your life. Only because you're busy, you're full of yourself, you're full of your own imagination. But as long as you're humbling yourself and you listen to the inner voice, you see the messages that Hashem is sending to you, you're opening your eyes, you show your will to Hashem, Hashem, I want to see you, Hashem, I want to come closer to you, immediately you're with Hashem, on the spot, on the moment, in reality. I saw a number of miracles in my life that I, I, I don't even remember the number of miracles. And they all happened to me only because of my honesty in prayer. Only because of the pure intention that I had really to be saved by Hashem. You don't need to be righteous to be saved by Hashem. You just need to go with a broken heart to Hashem and to tell Him, I can't solve it without you. I need your help. I can't buy that ticket. I can't rent that house. I can't buy that food. I can't have shalom bite with my wife. I'm not able to do it. I don't know how. Only when you humble yourself and you surrender to Hashem and you say to Hashem, please reveal your glory, your beauty, your greatness, your, 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 your power, your kindness. Then He comes. Because Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. So what we're missing? The truth. Which truth? The divine truth. The sophisticated truth. No, honesty. Just say the truth. Stop lying to yourself. Say the truth. Say I'm a liar. That's the truth. I'm a liar. Say I'm a liar. That's my truth. I'm a liar. That's my truth, Hashem. I'm a thief, Hashem. That's the truth. I have desires. I have lust. I'm confused. I'm lost without you, Hashem. If you did that, you're with Hashem. You're with Hashem. Hashem will help you. Now you will find the solution. Even if it will be one step after the other. Yes, it's going to be a process. To purify something like us, it will be a process. It will take time. To clean something so messy that went through so much in life. We have such thick scars and, and, and dark stains in, in, in who that we became to be. We got used to so many bad midot, bad attributes, bad behaviors. What can we do? We're stuck in the mud. We're coming with a lot of garbage, with a lot of, of filth in front of Hashem. But at least you come with your honesty, with your intention. And then the spark of your soul will not going to disappear. Even in the hardest wash, in the hardest process of purification, you will stand still and you will find the power. So what if they rebuked you? So what if they insulted you? So what if they hurt your feelings? They hurt your feelings only because that you chose to be offended. Only because that you didn't have that purpose in life to listen and to learn and to grow and to come closer to Hashem. But if you will decide to stand in every fire, in every rebuke, no matter what they're going to tell you, you want to listen, you want to learn, you will never going to die from that rebuke. That rebuke will just going to point for you going to help you to recognize the things that you need to fix. And if your will will be strong enough, you will fix them. 
You will deal with that rebuke. You will take that lesson and you're going to work on yourself day after the other until you're going to accomplish. Until you will achieve perfection serving Hashem. It depends on the purity of your heart, in your will, in how much you're ready to dedicate for the truth. Which truth? The humbling truth that we are just creations of the Creator. That He, the King of all kings, He is the one that gives the power. He is the one that gives the money. He is the one that gives life and health. And every other kind of Shefa, He is the one that gives. Only when you surrender to that, you can enjoy everything that He's got to offer. Before that you surrender yourself, and you still bring yourself, you're stuck. With what you're stuck? There is a verse. The verse is saying, Anochi Hashem Elokecha. I am your God. As long as you're selfish, as you are Anochi, you cannot let Hashem Yitbarach be the only God that there is. When you're still selfish, you stop Hashem in a way. If you say, no, I make money, great. So Hashem cannot show you how He knows to make money. As long as you say, yes, I'm making the Shalom by peace with my wife, I know how to respect her, I know. As long as you say that, you cannot understand at all how much Hashem got to offer. What does it mean to have the blessing of Hashem, the Shekhinah Gdusha in your house? As long as you think that you know how to satisfy her, how to please her, how to make her happy. As long as you think that you're wise, Hashem cannot show you His wisdom. How wise He is. That His wisdom is beyond your reach. That His wisdom is, is from a different world. That He can let you enjoy from such bounty that you've never been exposed to. That you never even knew that it exists at all. But when you're humbling yourself and you're ready to learn, so on that, the verse is saying, You will see Hashem with an eye that no one else ever saw before. You will receive from Hashem Barach gifts that no one ever experienced before. You will have your unique connection with the Creator. He will give you something that no one else ever experienced, no one ever felt before. You will have your own connection where you can find that connection. Only inside. Only inside your soul. You're connected to Hashem from inside, not from the outside. The outside of the creation, it's the world of separation. It's the world of lie. Alma de Shikra. It's a world full with coverings that are covering what? The light of Hashem. How they're covering? If something got seven coverings, so the first one is the closest to the truth. And the second is covering on the first cover. The third is covering two covers already. So if you see the outside, you almost cannot see anything. But when you have that will, and you decide to ignore all of those curtains, and you decide to break all of the barriers, and to go into, between the cracks, into the light, and to find the truth, so in the end, what that you will experience will be the divine truth, the real truth, the Creator Himself. So now, physically, if you want to see Hashem, you can look at the mirror, what you're going to see. You're going to see the seventh covering. You're going to see the outside. You're going to see the peak of light. You're going to see the astara shebetoch astara. You're going to see the coverings that are covering many, many other coverings. Depends on how much you lie to yourself until today. That's how far you're going to see. So where you need to look, you need to look inside. You need to look beyond your body, beyond your face, beyond your color, beyond your money, beyond your talents, to look inside. What is the source of who that I am? To make that investigation, I know it requires a lot of courage. You need to be very brave to look deep into yourself and to deal. Why? Because, okay, you bought an amazing house, but when now you open the door, you see tons of garbage and the walls, are, the, the color is, is peeling from the walls. There is a lot to do. Electricity and plumbings and whatever. Okay, it's a big mission, but don't give up. 
because you bought that house. Yes, it's going to be a hard work. Yes, but in the end, you will enter and it will be yours. So now let's say that you decided, okay, I want to do that. What you're going to find? Many, many days of labor and sorrow and pain and shame. That's the beginning of the process. It's true. It's a painful process. To realize how much we lie to ourselves. To realize how much rabbis and our parents lie to us. Where it started already thousands and thousands of years ago that we lost the path. That people lied to us, mislead us, fooled us, lied to us in horrible ways. And that we lied to ourselves, that we were too lazy. Those are the things that you will find out first in the beginning of the process of finding the truth. But in the end of that process, you will find the pleasant of Hashem. You're going to find an unconditional love. You're going to find an inner connection to a source of good, of positive energy, of healing, of truth, of bounty, of shefa, of health, of light. You won't lack a thing, but only in the end of that process. In the beginning, you need to have a very strong will, a very strong, powerful dedication to the truth. To be ready to fight with the fears, with the stress, with anxieties, with depression, with sadnesses, with darkness. Because those are the external coverings, layers that are blocking the good, pleasant light of the Creator. But the ones that will not surrender will see the light, will enjoy from the pleasant of Hashem. And then... There is nothing that this world can offer you that will bring you to the same satisfaction. Like to see Hashem. Like to feel Hashem. And if you think that we're talking about levels of righteous people and oh, we're talking high and who knows those levels and what they depends. It depends only in your truth. Only in one thing it depends. In your truth. In your truth. If you're going to open books of Kabbalah and going to try to learn Zohar Kadosh with explanations of huge righteous people and you don't understand what you're reading and you don't understand what it means and you don't find the connection between that to your life situation. So I'm not saying that it's not good, but it's less important than really to take care of yourself. For an example, if you're going to ask me what's more important, to learn a page of Zohar a day or to brush your teeth and to wash your hands in the morning when you wake up. I'm going to tell you for sure that to wash your mouth, to brush your teeth, to wash your hands. It's for sure. It's much more important. But the Zohar Kadosh, yes, but you don't understand at all. And let's start with the basics. First of all, if you have a certain need, if you're afraid of something, you need to deal with that. You need to solve your problems first. If you cannot hear someone that is telling you, if you cannot stand your wife, if you cannot stand yourself, if you, you're facing your family and you hate them, if you hate yourself, if you cannot forgive yourself, you don't have anything to do with the Zohar Kadosh yet. And it's okay. It will come. My Zohar Kadosh is also standing in the bookcase waiting for that day that I'll open it. It's okay. I'm working on something. It will wait. It was waiting for me for thousands of years. It's going to wait another year, another two years. He's going to wait. Got, Rabbi Shimon, he's got patience. He's okay. He's in Meron. He's happy. He's relaxed. Everyone are coming, visiting him. Every Rosh Hashanah, Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh. He's okay. I need to be okay. I need to work on myself. If I see that I'm losing my mind every day, trying to wake up so early and going and running, shtiblach and praying and shachrit and mikveh and rashi and rabbeinu tam and dafayomi and I must do this and that. And, and I'm losing my mind and my wife, she can't stand life and the children doesn't want to hear about Judaism and they just want to run to the forest so something is wrong here. Even though that I was dreaming and fantasizing, who knows I'm going to be... It's a dream. It's a fake. It's not reality. Wake up in the morning. Wash your face. Be happy. Come back to yourself. Think with yourself. What am I doing? What do I want to do? Who am I? What's my mission? Wash your hands. 
Say thank you to Hashem. If you feel like it, if you're angry at Hashem, talk to Him about it. Be honest. Hashem is saying to us, Bisfatav kibduni, and they were respecting me with their mouth, but their heart was still far away from me. So Hashem got a complaint on that. You're praising Hashem all day long. Hashem is good. It's all for the good. It's all for the best. And you're blessing and you're saying. But in a certain situation, in your real life, you're disappointed from Hashem. So you have a distance from Hashem. So you're not 100% close to Hashem. So what is more important now? I think that to deal with those frustrations, with that sorrow that you have, with that distance that you have, is much more important than to go and praise from the mouth out. I think that to take care of your heart and to go with Hashem to a deep conversation and to tell Him, listen, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. I was praying for months and months on something and it didn't happen. And I felt like you were with me. And then suddenly you turned your back on me. I, I don't understand it, Hashem. Can you explain? I'm not saying that you did something wrong. Just me, as who that I am, I can't forgive. I can't move on. I'm so hurt. <coughs> Maybe I'm too sensitive. But can you heal me? Can you explain it to me? Can you help me and solve my emotional problem with that situation? That honesty will heal you. But the deny and the fear to deal with your frustration and your sadness and your depression will leave it closed in the closet and covered and buried and not dealing with. And after years and years, suddenly you have skeletons that died in the closet that you need to deal with. Suddenly you're going to see that something is going on with you and that, that, uh, that you're not happy and that you're not satisfied and that something is wrong. Why to wait that it's going to explode? Why not to deal with our issues with honesty right away? When you feel pain, when you feel sorrow, talk about it with Hashem. For what Hashem commanded us to pray? For what Hashem told us that we can talk to Him like we talk to our best friend? If not, that we're really going to talk to Him like we're talking to our best friends. That we will be able to share and to open and to, and to cry and to, to beg and to ask. If that's not the will of the Creator from us, so what's His will? If He doesn't really want to help me to solve all of my inner problems, so what does He want from me? So now I have a problem. So what do I need to do? I need to dare to take it and to express it, to expose it, to share it, to talk about it, even only with Him, even only with myself, and not to hide, and not to ignore my own emotions and my own stress and my own fears. I must be honest if I want to be close to Him. I must be truthful. I must be loyal. When Hashem said to Moshe that he's about to decree a horrible decree on our nation, Moshe told him, Kill me first. What are you talking about? There's no way I'm going to let you kill no one here. Kill me first, Moshe said. When Hashem is telling to Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm sending my angels with you, they will walk with the camp. They will protect you. No harm will happen to you. Don't worry. They're going to take you to the promised land. Moshe Rabbeinu is telling Hashem, listen, if you're not coming with us, we're not going nowhere. We're not going. You're not going to send your angels with us. If you're not coming with me, I'm not going. Someone is telling you, you have an amazing opportunity, a job, go, Israel, whatever. You need to stop. Say, no, no, no. I'm not taking that. Hashem, are you coming with me? Will I see a complete salvation over there? Will it be complete? If not, I'm not talking. I'm not taking. People are calling me. I'm in stress. I want to get married and I'm not sure. This shidduch, they offer to me. I'm asking, do you know that you want to spend the rest of your life with that person? Only if the answer is yes, you're getting married. If the answer is maybe, so maybe. So don't, so wait, so check. You're not getting married before you know that that's your shidduch. 
Do you want to realize that you made a mistake after two years, after two months, after two days? You want to be embarrassed in front of all of your life, all of your family? You want to feel so bad with yourself because you're afraid? Don't be afraid. Say no and refuse even if you're 35, even if you're 42. Be honest with that and I refused. I told her you did the right thing. Because that's the simple wisdom. You need to be honest. You just need to follow your heart. You cannot get married with someone that you're not going to love. That you're not going to enjoy life with him. You're not supposed to do those things. And if you decided to compromise and you realized with your thoughts that you should go and live your life with that person, so okay. Come to that understanding that you will do it with a happy heart and a wishing soul for the rest of your life. Because you understand that it's the best thing for you. So do it with a smile. But keep the smile. It doesn't mean that you need to aim to the heights and always to dream high and to be a millionaire and to have houses. No. It means that you just need to be connected to your inner truth. And only when you are a good friend of yourself and you have a deep, honest conversation with yourself on your real being, who am I? And what's the mission of my life? And what am I doing here? And what do I want to achieve from life? Only when you know the answers to all of your questions, then you became Baal Tshuva. Then you have the answer. You own the answer. You are a Baal Tshuva because you dared to ask the questions. And you found the answer because Hashem answered you. Because Hashem is close to everyone that will call you with truth. And you called, you asked, you dared to check and to investigate. That we're achieving through simple Hidbodadut, through prayer, through conversation with ourselves, with Hashem. 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Find the time in the day and talk to Hashem like you talk to your best friend. And don't have mercy on Him. He's okay. Tell Him whatever you feel. Like that you want that your best friend will be honest with you. Like that you want that your child will be honest with you. Be honest with Hashem. Only words of truth will bring you closer to Him. Closer to yourself. The hatred and the sadness that we're carrying inside of ourselves is only because that we feel that we betrayed ourselves, that we lied to ourselves, that we gave up on our own dreams. But if you're not going to give up on your truth, on your dreams, to be who that you really believe that you should be, you will be the happiest person on earth. And you will have the tools and the power to share that with many others, to learn from you how to become themselves, and to find their inner connection to Hashem. They don't need to follow you. They need to find Hashem and to follow Hashem from inside. Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.